there are a lot of people that utilize options flow. They look at options flow, they read options flow, but what I'm finding is most people don't know how to actually analyze options flow. And this is something that is really important because you want to be able to use this information the right way. So I had a great example yesterday. It was pretty clean, come through Microsoft. This is something we find trip most people up. I have this information actually zoomed in so that you could take a closer look, uh, but wanna start with our basic guidelines. This is something that we live by. It's our options flow checklist and it's what we are looking for in flow. It's a great place to start so that you can really take and hone in on the information that's coming through because there is so much data that's coming at you so quick. So start with this. What were we looking? We are ultimately looking for that multi-million dollar flow, really where there's very large positioning by institutions. That's really what we're looking for. But we wanna make sure it's coming in the right way. So we're looking at a time frame. We either want it to be coming in short time frame or continuously coming in. That's showing that they still want those contracts and they're continuing to pay up. Look for same strike same expiration and contract price increasing. And this is important. So it's important that you isolate the flow so that you're seeing that. We wanna see ask and above the ask. And we're really looking for sweeps, no solo blocks. Because remember, solo blocks are usually tied to dark pool shares. There's something else going there. We really wanna see that sweepers are stepping up to show us that there's aggression to get into a trade. And so I have this same screenshot of the Microsoft flow, just wanted to really get in here and zoom in, just keep us real focused on, well, if I could get there, real focused on um, the information so you can visually see uh, what I'm referencing and what really trips up a lot of retail. So we're always going to isolate the flow. What are we looking at? Same strike, same expiration. These came in yesterday, the 519, 315 calls. Let's start at the bottom. That's always where you want to draw your eye to. Start from the bottom. And you can see that this is Clean, looks good. They came in on the ask, they paid 350, came in again, they played 350. This is what will trip people up. They see a bid side coming through. But one thing I want you to look closer at is that contract price actually increased. They came in again and again and again. And every time they came in, remember they're sweeping this. They said, get me filled, get me filled now. And I started coming in at 350. I still want them up here at 390. Um, you have another bid side, but let's focus here on what the actual contract price is doing. Every time they come up, they continue to increase on that contract price and they continue to pay up for that order. Think about that. If they're coming into a position and they continuously come in, they're not coming in just to turn around and flip for $5 on a contract, if, especially with this kind of size. So this was kind of an easier one. I wanted to start with this one so that you're getting an idea and you're visually seeing what we're looking for and how we actually analyze flow. Charlie actually has an example from today um, that was on the queues. This was uh, central time. Um, so this was right at the open. Charlie, I'm gonna let you walk us through this one. So this one was interesting, and this is where the checklist, you know, me and Mel, who really analyze flow, could do this without a bid or an ask over there. Uh, we really could. Um, and I want to go back to the checklist for a second, where it does say A and AA. That's your just easy, easy checklist. That's a beginner checklist. And what we're fixing to get into next on this QQQ is a little bit more advanced than that. But the concepts are going to be the same. So what she has squared off here, this happened in 27 seconds, 27 seconds. This, this much size went through the, the exchanges in 27 seconds. So starting at the very bottom, you can see the first one's at 438, but I want you to concentrate more on the spot price of the actual queues, which was 302.79. And if you go to the top of her square, you can see the spot price was at 302.70. So the spot price actually went down on the queues, but this contract price over here went from 438 to 469. Now, how does your spot price go down, but your contract price going up? Aggression, aggression. And forget how this looks like it filled and forget trying to, you know, get in the deep, dark exchange mysteries because none of us are going to answer, well, how did that fill below bid? I don't care. 
I honestly don't care. What I know happened is it came in at 438, 439, 438.7, 446.2. So right there, now the spot price, it went up a little bit, but then the spot price just went up another penny. But you see the contracts right there jumped, you know, uh, 446 to 447. Then they jumped to 441, even though that spot price dropped five cents. And like I say, at the top of this square, spot price of the queues went down, but contract price is still going up. In the far right box, you'll see the IV. IV 44 all the way up to 50. IV is not going up if somebody is, is you know, selling those contracts. So people, you know, I had people in the comment on Twitter, well, maybe they were selling, maybe they're doing this, maybe they're doing that. If the spot price is going down and they're selling, trust me, those contract prices are dropping. They're dropping instantly. These kept going up even though the spot price dropped. We can forget the rest of the part of the day. You can see it's basically the same pattern, but this was the pattern we looked for in the first, because this is that time frame Mel talked about in the checklist. This is that 45 seconds, or I'm sorry, 27 seconds that told us everything. Now, when these first started coming through, it, Mel was just a, a little late this morning. I'm like, hey, Mel, they're selling some 300s. Mel's the one that caught it. I said, hey, Charlie, whoa, back up. And then I started looking at it. And I'm like, oh my God, this was this was pure buying. So good eye, Mel. Because uh, I had just seen the first three. And at the first three, just looking at it, you know, IV over there is kind of muted and maybe even going down. First three, it didn't really matter to me. And this wasn't somebody buying them back either, because you can also tell by the size. Uh, this was way more size coming in after those first three sweeps. I mean, the size just kept going and going and going. Uh, so it wasn't like that was a flip out or something. That was just aggressive buying. I can't help how it filled, but you could actually take the bid and ask away from me and Mel. And we could look at the spot price. We could look at the details column and we could look at the IV, which may or may not always move. Like in Microsoft, it was so far out of the money. IV really didn't move on that one. But we could take this flow right here without a bid or an ask. And we know what they're doing. Instantly, just by going spot price is X. The detail of the contract is X. It's responding this way. That's when you start getting into that higher level. Like Mel said, a lot of people watch flow, but they don't analyze flow. And what was that comment the guys had today? Uh, not flow. Uh, it was uh, uh, flow forensics. So we want to get all of you there where you guys are really putting this flow under a microscope. And if you have one line item come in and it's ask or bid, you have you take it for that because you have nothing else to kind of compare or review. But when you have multiple lines of flow, this is what you want to be looking for. Same strike, same expiration, that contract price, that's going to tell you a lot. Um, and Charlie's absolutely right. I don't really even see ask and bid as much because I've just trained my eye to really just look at that detail section and look at the other points that are going to really give me a little bit more insight on how these contracts filled. We do wish it was that easy to where it was just, hey, this is exactly what happened, but that tape moves really fast and all of this is happening in blink of an eye, milliseconds, a lot of this feeding through algorithmically. So you have those that will catch on the ask or catch on the bid. And this is why this part of analyzing flow is absolutely imperative. We hope you found this helpful. Um, please reach out if you have any questions and I really hope that you start to look at flow a little bit differently, put that microscope under it and start to look at these spot prices, the IV moving, the timestamps, that spots, you know, dropping, contract price increasing. These things will really help you dial in your flow uh, activity to be able to really pull out the gems and understand what's going on. Thank you for your time.